Our organization believes the greatest problem in Haiti is poor soil from erosion due to the destruction of the forests. The original mahogany trees that were once over this beautiful island were sold throughout the world for furniture, but in recent years they are mostly cut down to make charcoal for their cooking fuel. This port is in Arcaille, Haiti. It's where the ships bring charcoal from trees that are from Naganav and all over northern Haiti. They transfer and sell in Port au Prince for cooking fuel. This area the size of a football field is 10 foot high, just the dust that falls out of the bags which represent millions of trees. Dirty job, huh? Our goal is to eliminate the need for charcoal, yet replace jobs for those making and selling it. We want to train people from all over Haiti to assemble and sell improved cook stoves and the fuel they will use. This is our top lit updraft cook stoves for Haiti. They are not only the cleanest burning biomass stoves, they actually lower the carbon dioxide levers, levels in the atmosphere. These stoves actually have two fires. The one in the bottom heats the biomass with a lack of oxygen. This is known as pyrolysis. It separates the molecules, leaving the carbon, and the smoky like gas rises to the top and is burned off when it mixes with the oxygen in the atmosphere. Okay, this is burning with um, corn stover at the bottom, covered with a, um, wood shavings from a lay or a planer. This carbon that is left over is called biochar, which is a very badly needed soil supplement in Haiti. When mixed with the soil, biochar works like a sponge, holding water, nutrients, and microorganisms. The way charcoal is made in Haiti today is they first kill a tree by girdling the base with a machete. When it is dead, they will dig around the tree's roots and cut it down, light it on fire, and bury it until it pyrolyzes into charcoal. When this is done, they lose about 80% of the energy of the tree. Our tea lead stoves work exactly that same way. Except our stoves use the 80% of wasted energy and we save the 20% that is turned into biochar by adding it to the soil so they can grow more food. Okay, here's our biomass oven or stove. It's a tea lead stove. The air is wide open and it's cranking out the heat. We started this uh, 25 minutes ago and it's two gallons of water on here and she's smoking pretty good. She's going to boil any minute make a lot of noise and our oven is heating up this one burner goes through the base of this here stove you can cook eggs at the same time over here if you wanted and see the fire coming sideways as long as that's covered got a pan or whatever it'll continue on into the oven goes underneath the oven floor here goes up the side and then out the back and the vent is halfway down just to hold a little more heat in hopefully and right now we are at 325 so I'm gonna go and I get a sheet of cookies and bread and we'll see if we can bake bread in this tea lud stove with an oven and uh, we're in a garage here in Minnesota where it's cool it's not been a murder, but it's still cool out and you'll see there's no exhaust whatsoever from the stove it's cooking like crazy and here is the exhaust hot but clean as you can see, we are making these stoves very desirable, but we are also making them safe and efficient. These stoves have the lowest emissions of all biomass stoves, which will increase the lifespan 
for those who are currently cooking in unsafe indoor air environments. Our tea LUDs are designed to burn biomass in natural forms. They are large enough to cook meals for large families, such as rice and beans, which demand about an hour and a half of cooking time. We found that the denser the biomass, the longer they will burn. This stove, run with vetiver pellets, could run for four hours. This would be great for vendors who are selling food on the side of the market, especially to keep ovens hot for baking cookies or such. Haiti Reconstruction's most important program is to establish vetiver hedgerows on all the mountainsides to stop the erosion and along the river's banks to keep them in place. This remarkable plant can grow three meter roots and works like a filter when correctly planted in horizontal rows. In heavy rains its leaves catch and filter the water as it catches dead vegetation and waste and silt making its own compost and terraces. The dirt that is caught behind them becomes the most fertile soil and will grow more food. But this takes time and it's hard to explain to peasants that they need to plant this since they can't feed their families with it. We search for ways to get Haitians to want to plant vetiver and we finally found a great one. Energy, specifically fuel energy for cooking. That's a large part of their income. An average family of five we found spends about $315 a year on charcoal. Our project really becomes well-rounded as we can use vetiver for fuel for the stoves. We can make it into pellets or use it in a natural form. It can also be made into briquettes.